browsers, so many options, and absolutely no clear answers. If you ask one person, they'll tell you this one. If you ask 30 other people, they'll tell you 30 other ones. You might feel less confused at your local Ross. While many of you are asking what browser to use, and as much as I'd like to give you a single blatant answer like everybody else, the reality is the answer is a pretty complex one. Why? Well, your browser maintains a large degree of control over everything you do within it. Some browsers leave you insecure, some boost security at the cost of privacy, some boost privacy at the cost of security, some don't have enough customization for certain things, the list goes on. The pros and cons of each browser give us the opportunity to figure out where a browser falls short and excels, so you can reap the benefits of any browser tailored to your individual needs. This guide is not prescribing a specific configuration, but it'll teach you how to prescribe your own browser medication. I'm going to cover the broad ideas first, then offer some sample setups using some dummy scenarios. It's important that you have a general understanding of security and privacy on Android before going into this video, so I highly recommend, if you haven't watched it yet, to go give our Android security and privacy guide a watch because it will get you up to speed and fully grasp some of the concepts covered in this video. First, compartmentalization in the context of security and privacy is when you separate different aspects of your life into different compartments to prevent mixing. This is a key thing to understand. The easiest example is not doing personal stuff on a work computer or vice versa. These are two different masks you wear in your life and most people don't like them mixing. Your browser is pretty similar. There are browsers that are good for logging into your personal accounts, browsers that are perfect for non-personal, random browsing, some for anonymity, some for pseudonyms, and some for YouTube. Many of you may unintentionally do this on your computers when one website you use works better on a certain browser. Your job is to figure out which compartments you need and or want, then figure out how to satisfy those needs. So let's start by discussing possible compartments to set up for yourself. The main three starting points for most people are personal accounts, disposable, and anonymous. Personal accounts is the compartment you use to strictly log in to accounts. In this browser, you may only use your 10 accounts and never access any other URLs. Maybe each of these accounts knows exactly who you are. This is a situation where a unique fingerprint, like a hardened Firefox, wouldn't really work against you very much since every site you're logging into and accessing already knows who you are on a personal level and you're only accessing those websites but you can limit what further information they collect on you through all the hardening you've achieved. From a feature perspective, you might want the browser to keep you logged into your accounts for convenience. However, this can introduce a new risk. Uh, if someone gets past your device lock, they now have access to all of your accounts, a situation you can prevent by using a browser that requires a master password before giving access to each account. Up next is Disposable, a browser used for general usage. What's the weather? How do I get my dog to let me cut his damn nails? Why do people use Facebook? The questions no one can ever answer. This is for things that don't need to be tied to who you are. The main browsers for this on mobile are Firefox Focus and DuckDuckGo, which clear browser data on exit and implement tracking protection with a generally common fingerprint among users, so no specific person's configuration stands out to websites. Some other honorable mentions are Brave and Bromite. The last common compartment is Anonymous, and Anonymous is similar to Disposable, but with the extra layer of anonymity. This is normally exclusive to the Tor browser. Um, while you can just not use Disposable and completely rely on anonymity, or vice versa, most people don't want to use Tor browser for every single search unless they want to chuck their phone against the wall after the 30th site catches them. Because of these annoyances, this last compartment is commonly reserved for highly sensitive tasks or not used at all. These are just three examples of common compartments. Some other possible ones are multimedia. Brave in particular allows background audio when leaving the app, making it great for background YouTube audio, and maybe it's just your YouTube browser. Maybe you have two personal account browsers, one which stays logged in for low-risk accounts, and another that requires a master password to gain access to your more sensitive accounts. Or maybe you have a pseudonym with a few accounts you want separated from your main browser. This is why I can't really give a single recommendation to the thousands of people who watch our content. There are quite literally dozens if not hundreds of different options and use cases. Beyond just choosing a browser, the settings and configuration of both the browser and your phone are also things you need to figure out and can play into your decision. Should your browser be saving your passwords? Should you use pin protection for a specific app if you use biometrics as your device lock? 
Should you clear data on exit for a specific browser? These are all questions that can only be answered once you understand exactly what you want and how you hope to accomplish it. To help give you some examples, here are 100% real people and their setups. Sam is an 18-year-old beekeeper with a bank account, credit card, other generic accounts, and uses his phone day-to-day -day desiring a simple yet effective setup. Sam might choose to use Brave for his personal accounts, then DuckDuckGo as his only other browser where he does almost all his browsing when not accessing an account, and this is a valid configuration. Dimitri is a 15-year-old world-class GNU figure skater who worships Richard Stallman and refuses to use anything proprietary. He may opt to use Fennec Browser from F-Droid for his personal accounts, then exclusively the Tor Browser for everything else that doesn't need to be tied to his identity. Sarah is a 98-year-old politician who puts security over all else, so she chooses to use Vanadium, a hardened browser exclusive to Graphene OS for her browsing. She does not want to save her passwords because in the event her device lock is bypassed, someone gains direct access to her accounts. So she chooses to use KeyPassDX to autofill passwords in Vanadium after she enters her master password. These are just a few totally legit examples that hopefully teach you the mindset required to form your own decisions on this entire question of what browser should I use on Android. But let's actually try to give you some starting points. Let's cover your main browser options. DuckDuckGo is simple, blocks trackers out of the box, clears data on exit, and makes a good disposable browser. Firefox Focus is similar, but with nasty Google tracking out of the box and other things you should remember to disable. Mozilla, they're just, they're hypocrites, I'm telling you. Firefox and other iterations of it, like Fennec Browser, generally make good account browsers, though I personally stay clear of Firefox. Brave is a fun middle ground of ad blocking, tracking protection, fingerprint randomization, and a fully fledged browser with the only feature missing being private browsing only mode. This issue has been open on GitHub for years and it's on iOS. Gosh darn it, Brendan. Bromite implements good security with fingerprint randomization as well, with some niche features like a custom DNS blocker from within the browser. Privacy Browser is the stem cell of Android browsers. It's just a hardcore, customizable browser that you can really tailor to be anything. Vanadium is exclusively focused on security, which is mostly exclusive to Graphene OS. And of course, there's the Tor browser, which is built for anonymity. There are a plethora of other browsers, though I do believe for most people watching, these are the main options available to you that fit a majority of use cases at the time this video was made. And I hope that cleared things up, or at least offered you a starting point to finally figure out what browser or browsers to be using on your Android device. Make sure to share below what your browser setup is so other people can get some ideas for what you've figured out or experienced over the years. It's also important to recognize that some of the customization of each browser is dependent on things like what phone you're using, your threat model, and many other considerations covered in our Android Security and Privacy Guide, which dives much deeper into the Android world. So if you have further questions, I'd go there next because it fills in a lot of the gaps you might have if you're trying to figure out um, what browser to choose from here on out. If you liked this video, you know what to do. Make sure to hit the bell icon for new videos in the future when YouTube decides not to send notifications or they strike us. We have amazing communities you can join down below with thousands of other people. And of course, thank you to our patrons and other supporters. You can see all of our support methods in the support link below on our website. Thanks for watching and see you next time.